We have a poster on something called Project Echo, and Project Echo is a very simple model of telementoring. It was developed by Dr. Sanjeev Arora at the University of New Mexico, uh, maybe about 10 years ago. He is a gastroenterologist who treats patients with hepatitis C, and he realized that in the very rural state of New Mexico, there were maybe uh, 30,000 people infected and the only place they could get treated was either Albuquerque or Santa Fe, so just two locations. So he developed a uh, video conferencing uh, group, if you will, of about 15 clinics and six prisons, and uh, basically guided the primary care physicians through the treatment of patients with this disease. It was a complicated set of treatments. It required the patients to see the doctor maybe 12 to 18 times over a one-year period, um, and it was very successful. So the local physicians became empowered and de developed the skills necessary to treat this disease. The patients didn't have to travel hundreds of miles to see the doctor, you know, once every two to three weeks. And uh, it was a way to move knowledge instead of people, if you will. And uh, it created um, specialists uh, among the primary care providers able to treat this illness. So we've adapted this model to um, a variety of different scenarios uh, for cancer prevention, for management of cancer in low resource settings. Um, we're developing one in palliative care as well. So the project echo that we have here uh, in the poster at Aortic uh, talks about all of our projects, but the ones that we're focused on particularly as uh, this is a conference about cancer in Africa is the collaboration that we have with doctors at the Cancer Diseases Hospital in Zambia and Lusaka and also uh, Maputo Central Hospital in Mozambique. And so we have a multidisciplinary team at MD Anderson who meets on a regular basis with um, doctors in each of these locations and we discuss difficult cases and the different treatment options. Obviously MD Anderson is a very high resource hospital and these are low resource areas so uh, you know it's, it's a an opportunity for us all to learn from each other because we cannot offer the same treatment in Mozambique that we can in the United States. Uh, so it's been a very uh, good working relationship and it offers a nice foundation for continued communication, opportunities for collaboration and a variety of different areas have presented itself and so it's been a very, very good model. Well, there's always the challenge of internet, uh, and really all it requires is uh, enthusiasm on both ends of the camera and good internet. Um, so that is always a bit of an issue, but otherwise uh, there aren't really that many challenges. It's, uh, it just requires interest and a little bit of commitment to develop those relationships, to discuss the cases. Uh, of course, it requires time on everybody's part, and that's sometimes difficult to find, but uh, it doesn't take much time. It's at no cost for the partners in Africa. And uh, interestingly, the, the project that we run with Mozambique is conducted in Portuguese, and so we have partners uh, in Brazil who are mostly the moderators of those discussions because I don't speak Portuguese, and neither do any of our doctors at MD Anderson. But uh, we are facilitators and participants, but the actual medical discussions and the uh, presentations are done in Portuguese. No, it's a kind of make, you know, make your own, build your own. Uh, Project ECHO is actually trademarked, and uh, really the, uh, the philosophy behind it is that uh, you do it in good faith. It's uh, connecting consultants with providers in under-resourced or low-resource settings, it is at no cost to them. And, um, you know, that's basically it. So it's, it's a process, it's, it's just video conferencing and it's, it's done in good faith with those tenants behind the, behind the process. We have been using Project ECHO for about a year and a half at MD Anderson. Our first project was for cervical cancer prevention in the under-resourced area along the Texas-Mexico border. It's, uh, it's an area where more women 
uh, get cervical cancer. Resources are very low. There are fewer doctors and nurses in that area, particularly treating patients in the public system. And so we have had a very good twice a month uh, connection with the providers, mostly nurse practitioners, nurse midwives, physicians assistants, and a few doctors in that area. And it's part of a larger strategy that we have to bring more women in, to make sure they get the proper screening and the proper evaluation, and to uh, find them when they don't come in for their appointments. So we're losing a lot less to follow up. And by doing this, we hope that ultimately we will reduce the the burden of cervical cancer in this area. So from that we, uh, we developed also the cancer uh, management for breast and cervical cancer in Africa. We also have a consortium of Latin American uh, partners and we do cervical cancer prevention and management. Um, again we're, I would say we're the moderators and facilitators, some of us do speak Spanish, but it's a consortium of 10 countries, representatives from 10 countries and we do that as a project ECHO also. And our next uh, developing project, I would say, is in palliative care, and it's palliative care uh, in Africa and palliative care in India. And so we have a, a team of palliative care specialists at MD Anderson who are in the process of developing the relationships among the palliative care teams in Africa and India to create that project ECHO.